Hi everybody, uh, thanks for checking out my video. My name is Rajesh Valuri and I'm going to walk you through this process of installing, um, downloading, installing and uh, uh, compiling .NET was, uh, YOLO version 4. Uh, this um, .NET, if you don't know, um, is a state-of-the-art object detection program written by uh, Joseph Redmond at University of Washington. Uh, and is, uh, is currently open sourced and it's available for anyone to use. Um, and the great thing about this is uh, it's written in C and it has really powerful, like I said, state of the art at the moment. Uh, and um, we can use it um, without spending too much time or energy or um, computing power. Um, uh, all of these instructions that I'm going to show you are actually available on both Joseph's uh, GitHub and also it's fork Alexis um, GitHub, but uh, I have already done this. So um, as have many others on the internet, uh, but these are uh, the things that I have I learned and uh, these are the steps that I have um, observed and uh, and I wanted to share with you my understanding of the process. Uh, the way um, I, I wanted to do this is because this is the way I wanted to do because um, it is a great way, great way to actually absorb and cement my understanding is by explaining what I did uh, to others. So um, there is a bit of selfish motive for me on this uh, on my side as well. But at the end of the day, uh, I, this is a condensation of the various steps that Alexi and um, Joseph Redmond have. Um, given on their, on their repositories. Um, so yeah, without uh, much um, delay, let's, let's get right on it. Uh, like I said, all of this is, you don't need to go through my video. All of this stuff is actually on in the wiki um, page of, of those repositories that I'm gonna share uh, in the description. But if you just wanna go uh, follow my steps and, and uh, just get a uh, feel for it and um, I'll try to understand it better, yeah, go for it. And I think uh, that's that's my my intention. So uh, let's start by just looking at what Joseph has to say about darknet, um, and then uh, we'll we'll go we'll go from there. I want to share my screen now. Yeah, so we're here. Let's start by, yeah, this is one of the, one of the examples, images that I have uh, tested and this is beautiful. I'll, 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 speak, I'll talk about this a little later. Uh, let's, let's start by going to, uh, um, going to um, Joseph Redmond's um, uh, web page. This is actually a very interesting and inspiring page if you, if you have the time um, and he's, extremely smart and extremely cheeky as well. If you look at his resume, it has, see, look for yourself. It has ponies on it. Ponies or unicorns, yeah. Anyway, so I guess when you're that smart, you can get away with stuff like this. But yeah, all of this um, um, darknet uh, is actually, like I said, it was a uh, convolutional network built by Joseph at this university and it's written in C and it can be compiled for either C, uh, for CPU or GPU. So the way we are gonna do it is um, take his code. We don't need to download it to our laptops because uh, um, our laptops probably are not that powerful compared to what we have at Colab, at Google's Colab. So what we're essentially doing is um, going to Colab, download the source code, build it, test it. Simple as that, shouldn't take you more than half hour really if you follow my instructions. And then once you do this, then you can, um, once you get the basics right, and then the next steps would be to just go into the guts of it and tweak it, change, make changes um, to, to the settings and all those things, and you can do a whole bunch of things. But uh, like I was, um, if you think of this as a sign-on bonus, if, if you are new to the machine learning field and um, computer revision in general, in particular, this is a great way to start. Like this is a, this is kind of a um, fruit at the end of the day, uh, which which you you'll get to taste in the beginning. It it will uh, help you um, 
really a uh, um, cement that love and uh, curiosity for machine learning and uh, computer vision. So let's get started. Like I said, um, uh, the, um, he, uh, 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 Joseph has built Darknet and it, it has, um, um, it, it is available on GitHub. And um, if you go to GitHub, uh, the, the, the repository that I use in the tutorial is actually by Alexey AB. I don't know what AB stands for, uh, but he's a, this Russian dude, very, uh, I think as, as smart as um, um, Joseph. Um, so uh, all of the instructions I am going to explain to you uh, are available here itself. Uh, so you see this readme.md, but the thing is um, you, you have a Jupyter notebook, which I, I'm going to share with you. There's just a few cl clicks of a mouse and then you, you're, there, you're there. So try with my approach first, and then you can, like I said, you can go back and, and tweak it to your liking. All right, now you, you need to go to my, um, my GitHub which is this um, and uh, it's yolov4 underscore test. Just click on that one and it'll take you to this, um, this repository. Ignore the read.readme.md file, that's really not uh, that useful. Just click on this guy and it will show the Jupyter notebook. Um, and uh, while, while we wait for this, I just wanted to sh uh, sh uh, tell you that this is, um, there is a few other tutorials about this um, written by people a sm lot smarter than I am and a lot more qualified than I am. But I think, I think uh, you should still consider watching this video to the full because um, this is uh, me, a mediocre, a, um, <laughs> a mediocre, um, let's say not mediocre, let's say um, someone who is, not extremely as smart as these guys. So I understand the struggles and I understand the pain points and the stumbling blocks. And then I can actually guide you through, uh, through, uh, um, through, through them. So um, you, you won't be wasting a lot of time trying to uh, get to the bottom of those, those issues. So yeah, um, this happens a lot. So for some reason, like um, on, on GitHub, the, the file doesn't show immediately. A couple of times it's, uh, you have to retry, hit retry. Um, anyway, um, so there's this little button. If you want to look at the code here, you can, but it doesn't add much value in GitHub because you can, cannot actually run any of this uh, in GitHub. So uh, if you click this button, it will open Colab. Colab, again, if you don't, if you don't know by now, is, um, is Google's kind of a uh, open source, free for all um, Jupyter um, playground. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it. But basically you can write Python code, TensorFlow, um, using TensorFlow, you do all kinds of things with machine learning and other stuff. Um, so um, the, 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 best, the best part is it's free and it comes with um, graphic processing units, GPUs with up to 16 gigs of memory on them. And that means they're freaking powerful beasts uh, that you can do a lot of stuff with. And um, it's all for free. You know, obviously there are certain limitations like uh, how long you can train um, in a 24 hour window, that kind of stuff. And then you obviously can't store, uh, can't keep those, um, those um, collab uh, sessions um, longer than a certain time. But um, all said and done, it's, it's actually a very, really, uh, very really, um, nice way to get started. You don't need to fork out a ton of money on building a GPU um, at home, you know, like, uh, powerful machines at home. You, do, you don't need to do that. that. That's no longer an excuse. You, you can do like 90% of what you want on Colab. And then if you really, really need that extra 10%, you can pay for it if you're in the US and Canada. Or if you're at that point that 10% that of grunt will make a difference, then yes, you can go ahead and uh, fork that money for a powerful uh, machine for yourself, but until that point, you can just use Colab for a lot of things. Okay, that's the, um, and it's free, like I said. So let's click on um, open in Colab and it'll just open this Jupyter notebook in, in uh, uh, Google's Colab, a couple seconds. And the, the good thing is that uh, because Google is behind all of this, it, it comes with like really powerful, um, uh, hardware and um, all of these machines are powered by NVIDIA GPUs 
and um, yeah, and, and come with like 16 gigs of RAM, which is really high end. Um, not much for machine training, but for, for the purposes of what we are going to do, that's, that's, that's plenty. Again, um, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show you a, a screen. Um, um, it's just like an overview of, of the steps involved. Um, so if you see th those steps, it, 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 it'll help you um, just understand um, basically what, 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 what we're trying to do here. So here, um, uh, yeah. So here, the 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 broad um, uh, steps in, in here are download the source code. Uh, download the source code from GitHub onto Google Colab, which is like a one command that does it, and that the wget command. And then make changes to the make file, like those familiar with building uh, C, uh, compiling C and C++ files on uh, Linux boxes or Unix machines should be, should, you should be aware of this. And then the next step is to compile and build. That's it. At this point, you already have the structures, the, the building blocks of, of the darknet um, uh, framework. And then you, you need uh, pre-trained weights. Uh, the, the best part is the weights are also available as open source. Uh, the, these guys went all, all out on uh, this open source concept. So even the, the trained weights are available for the MS Coco data set. What is MS Coco data set? I'll explain to you a little later. And then once um, you got the weights and the structure built, that's it. Then you have a, um, you have a functioning uh, darknet. Um, so YOLO V4 detector ready. And then uh, the next thing is to Upload a few images and then uh, run the detector. Um, and th this is this is really uh, um, fascinating because all of this takes like less than half hour, uh, and then um, you can build a fully functioning object detector, uh, um, um, and then uh, go to town with it. Okay, so yeah, that's that. And then um, go back to where we are. So here we go. So this is my Colab um, 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 screen. Um, so, so Colab is actually a, a, a um, I think it's the right word. It's a Linux environment that fires up and then uh, well, you can use it for as long as you want and then you can uh, close it. And then unfortunately, once you close it, all the files, they're all deleted and all the sessions are gone and you have to start over. Um, but um, yeah. So when you log into Colab, this is the screen. This is what you see with, with my notebook. And on the left of it, it there's a table of contents, like an introduction, what, 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 what we're doing. These are some of the steps that I have, uh, I have um, um, given head, uh, like this, um, uh, uh, headings, sub, uh, like uh, section headings to sections, different sections. And uh, you can also um, look at the files, file system. So at this time we're not actually connected to the to the runtime yet, so it's not showing any files. So the first step would be to um, I prefer. Um, so if this is the first time you are using this notebook, you need to do a couple of things. Um, um, by default, Colab is set for uh, CPU based execution, which is which is good, but it's not powerful enough for machine learning stuff. So either go to edit and go to network uh, notebook settings and like select GPU from the dropdown. Um, you can also go with TPU, but this is not meant for TPU. Um, so it, it's just GPU uh, and then um, save it. Or you can also go to runtime and it's the same thing. Uh, go to uh, change runtime type. And again, you can do the same thing here. Um, uh, so once you have done that, um, I, it's still, uh, I think at this point it's connected because it's showing sample data. Yeah, so sample data is uh, some of the, um, data sets that um, Colab has installed, I guess. Um, by the way, Colab comes with a whole bunch of libraries and um, Coda compiler and all of that other stuff that, that we need for machine learning and for especially for object detection uh, for darknet. So that's the best part. So that's already there. And all these files that we can safely ignore, we don't really need this sample data. We're not gonna do anything with, those, with the sample data. So um, it's a pet uh, habit of mine. So every time I connect to this, I just do LSL LTR to make sure that it's, it's actually working. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We know this notebook was not authored by Google. So it just wants to ensure that, yeah, you, you know that Google has nothing to do with it. 
that's fine. We say run anyway, anyway, and then it, it shows the sample data is only folder um, on this. Um, so that's that. So we are connected now. So you can actually look at uh, what's going on here, like manage sessions. So it will show you that there is uh, this notebook and it's using GPU. And uh, so far only 0 0.8 GB has been used. Good, basics. Now you can go through these instructions. Um, this is all text that I added just in case you don't only watch the video and just go through this. Fairly straightforward. The very first step is to clone um, clone the, the, the source code, the repository. So git clone, again, Alexi AB's um, repository, and this is the .NET repository that we have. Takes literally under a minute to do this um, because the transport is between two powerful servers, see? takes less, less than a few seconds. Um, we, we, there's no um, bottleneck of your machine or your, your broadband or anything. It's just machine to machine, server to server, really fast. And then um, again, uh, th this is something I do. So I just want to see what CPU, what GPU was allocated to this. This is a luck of the draw um, because every time you connect, you get a different set of uh, hardware. And so this, this the, what you see here is actually from my previous run. It has 16 to 80 megabytes, which is like 16 gigs of RAM. And um, Tesla P100, this is the GPU that was allocated. Now, highly likely that when I click this button, when I run this command, uh, it'll show me the current allocation, which will be uh, entirely different from, uh, from what you're seeing right now. So let's run this. Yeah. So the memory was a little slightly less. I think it's 15 gigs. I should be fine. And it's a Tesla T4. It's a different uh, GPU. And uh, then the other stuff like um, the GPU name, temperature, blah, 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 which we really don't need to concern ourselves with. Um, the version of CUDA, I think um, uh, this is a, a GPU compiler, uh, is version 10.1. You can see it here. But if you want to actually get the full details of the compiler, you run this command, nbcc double dash version, um, and then it shows you uh, the, uh, the actual um, 10, 1, 2, 4, 3. That's, that's the, the actual proper version of, of the CUDA compiler. Okay, that's good. So it's time to build the, the .NET uh, framework now. Uh, so we need to just, um, um, I do this again uh, out of habit. I want to see what, what files are there, like just make, to make sure that all the files are there and looks good, usually val validate this and the, the thing. So yeah, read dot, readme.md, all the Python files are there, all the folders are there, uh, so that's good. So next step is to actually look at the make file. Make file is, is um, contains a whole bunch of uh, um, arguments for the, the, the make command. Uh, so um, cd into the .NET folder and just look just look at the uh, make file first. So you see here um, I run this make file um, and it's GPU zero C to C C U C P N N zero. The first four are the are the ones that we really care about. So all of these are set to zero, which means they are they are disabled. So uh, what we need to do is uh, put, uh, enable GPU by setting this to one, enable CUDNN again uh, by putting that to one, CUDNN half also to one and uh, OpenCV, which is like a open source uh, computer vision library. Also we have to enable that to one. So all of these are used by the, the source code for, for, um, for darknet. So we just visually uh, saw the file. So we know what to change. And we scroll down and we this command a bunch of uh, SEDs sets uh, will uh, replace the GPU is equal to zero with GPU equals one uh, from the make file. So we run this quickly and that's quick. And then we can go back and we run this again just to ensure, make sure that it's, it's actually has, has made the changes. And bingo, all of them are ones now. Good. Now, now the magic of make. Again, I haven't done C plus or C or C plus plus coding in a long time, so I really don't even want to look at the, the the source code. But if you are a C programmer, and I think this this is a fascinating um, uh, piece of work that you need to uh, 
really study if you if you if you if you're keen. Um, so make um, just run the make command, and it's building it. As long as this um, this uh, icon is circling, um, then it mean, it means it's still working. So we just wait for it to finish, and uh, you can safely ignore all of the warnings, uh, unless it's really bad. Um, I, I don't think we need to work, worry too much. And come on, come on, come on, come on. It's finished, almost there. Yeah, I think uh, we, we should really appreciate the efforts made by these people. And, uh, and the, the fundamental idea of uh, open sourcing all of these things is, is really a, a noble thing to do because um, this, this, this kind of stuff is not, not easy to do because there's hundreds of thousands of, uh, thousands of man hours that must have gone into building this. And uh, because we don't have the same ecosystem, like we don't have the PhD students, we don't have the professors, we don't have the engineers, uh, we won't be able, we'll never be able to build something like that, um, like working in isolation. And, uh, and the, the idea that these guys decided to open source it is a, is a great um, testament to, the, to their mindset, to their, uh, to their um, what do you say, um, worldview that they have done all this hard work. There's no need for other people to do the same exact work unless they're doing something fundamentally different. They're, they're, this, this is, they're giving this to us and asking us to build products using this instead of uh, rebuilding this, re reinventing this. And that's actually a great thing because that way, now this, this, this piece of uh, code is available for literally millions of people around the world to uh, put it into a uh, great practical applications. And so that's how humanity um, progresses, I guess. Uh, and that's why I really, really appreciate what these guys are doing. Uh, kudos, boys. Now, and like I said, this is ready to go. All the structure has been built. Now the next step is actually to download uh, the weights. I just need to go into a bit of a tangent about these weights. Um, um, so object detection uh, and uh, image recognition in general has been one of the, um, um, the benchmarking tools, uh, benchmarking um, uh, to, uh, tools for machine learning. Uh, MS Coco is a is a fascinating data set uh, provided by Microsoft. It's called uh, Microsoft. Coco stands for uh, Common Objects in Context, which means they have picked uh, about 80 different classes of objects like uh, cars, uh, airplanes coffee cups, all kinds of things. Just 80 though, not, not many, 80 of them. And they have uh, given like thousands and thousands of images of um, in, in, the, in, the, in a data set. And then they said, take this and train your models and uh, come back to us with your, uh, with your uh, success ratios and your, your metrics. Um, so that's actually, yeah, MS Coco is actually at the moment um, um, is, is a great data set to benchmark your model against. And um, like I said earlier, uh, this darknet framework is actually kicking, kicking ass um, the state of the art at the moment in terms of the Coco data set. Now, when you're downloading these pre-trained weights, there are weights trained specifically for this Coco data set. Um, so if you use this, um, these weights on a different data set, you may not have the same level of success because some of the classes won't even be there. And, um, and, and yeah, so uh, let's say, I'll show you an example later where um, a particular type of animal is not in the MS Coco data set. So it treats that animal, the deer, uh, because it has four legs and a similar texture and similar size as a dog. It looks at a deer and thinks of it as a, as a, um, uh, a dog. So the, the reason I mentioned this is the weights are very important when it comes to uh, uh, to to the data set you're going to test against. Uh, so that that's you have, always have to keep that in mind. And, and in most practical cases, what happens is you just take the take the structure and you have to uh, spend time training against your own data set. Uh, otherwise, 
you may not be able to use it for practical purposes. The way to train uh, to your own data set uh, is, is a separate thing, which I'm going to cover in my next video. Uh, but for now, we're just going to use uh, the pre-trained weights for the COCO, uh, MS COCO uh, data set. Again, uh, the, the, the command to download weights is, is fairly simple. Uh, again, it, uh, the, the weights are available at uh, uh, Alex, uh, Alexis uh, repository and you just run this command, wget. In a, in a few seconds, you get that as well. Look at the speed, beautiful. That's it, we're good to go. Now, really that's it. Four lines of uh, code and then we're good to go. Now, let's run the, the detector. So how it works is um, you, you have to run .NET and uh, darknet can run in four modes, like four or five different modes. I think uh, if you go back to uh, uh, Alex, uh, sorry, uh, Joseph's uh, blog, it tells you what to do with it. Like I think you can also play uh, Go, the game, the, the famous uh, um, board game Go with it. But uh, I think that's what goes in the, as the first parameter, like what you're doing with darknet. In our case, we're just using it as a detector. So that's what we're telling it. And then are we training it or testing it? So we're using it to test. So that's the test. And uh, what kind of data set, Coco data set, there we go. And um, and what the config file is here and the, the weights we're gonna use are here. So up to this point, this is just the the the, the, the basics of the, the uh, darknet itself. And then here is a file that, what that um, comes shipped with the code, the darknet code. Um, so these are a bunch of uh, sample files and under the data subdirectory, uh, horses, person, scream, um, all of these things, dog. So I'm gonna test this on it on uh, on the dog. So I'll just show you what dog is. Uh, here we go. Yeah. So basically, it's a simple file, uh, image file with the dog, a bike, a truck in the back, a tree, and blah blah blah. So and this, we, this is what we're gonna test against. So let me close this and then run the test on the detector on it. Takes a couple seconds. It'll tell us what it's doing. Um, um, it, it's passing the image through all these layers. Uh, so you can see this, all these layers, convolutional layer, and then YOLO, and then up sample, a uh, whole bunch of things. Um, yeah, we, we really have to spend a lot of time if we want to understand the, the inner workings of this, but for this, uh, we, let's keep it simple. Let's just go through the, through, the, through the functioning itself instead of the code. So at the end, you can see the, at the very end, it says, okay, I found a bicycle and I think I'm 92% sure that it's a bicycle. A dog, I'm 98% sure, a truck, 92%, and a potted plant, but well, only 33%, okay? Interesting. So. Uh, what happens is when you run a, an image through the detector, it creates a file called the predictions.jpg. And it's a, it's a copy of the original file, but it has bounding boxes uh, around the objects that it has detected. And uh, it also shows the, the percentages that we just saw in, on, in the image. So that's actually in the main darknet uh, directory itself. There you go. You just double click it and you can see it. There you go. So the, the picture from earlier, um, yep, 98% and show that this is a dog, 92% that this is a bike, pretty impressive actually, because it's very skinny, This the bike and then, um, yeah. And then there's this truck was discovered, that's fine. The only thing was this thing at the back, that's actually a garbage bin, but um, it, it thought of it uh, as a potted plant. Yeah, it could be two reasons. Maybe there is no garbage bin in the Coco data set. I'm not sure. Or it's just that it, it, it couldn't actually uh, predict this as the, the right one. But again, that, that, that's, those, those are certain limitations uh, to this, uh, to this darknet uh, detector. Now, what fun is it if, it's, if you only use uh, the sample files provided by the system, right? Let, let's show with our own files. So what I did was, uh, I have a couple of files on my laptop. So if you want to test your own files, uh, there's two ways. You can do one file at a time. You can just upload an image and then run the same command as I just have. 
um, or um, I did um, another way where I uploaded a bunch of files to my Google Drive um, and then I um, uh, wrote a bit of uh, Python code to grab those files from Google Drive onto the, onto the Colab, run this detector on all of them and copy the, the results back into the Google into, back into Google Drive. So that way you can actually look at the results um, when, when you're free and, and, and you can run like a whole bunch of them. Like if you want to run like a hundred different pictures, you can do that easily. Whereas one picture at a time is not really that practical. So let's do the first step. Like uh, this is just one picture at a time. Um, I want to try this one. See the one you saw earlier. Again, Colab is warning us that this this file will be deleted when when once the this once the session ends, which is fine. The file is uploaded here based on the speed of your broadband. And what I do is, um, if you see a file like this and you don't know its exact path. Just do this. Um, go to um, right click and, and uh, click on the ellipsis and then uh, vertical ellipsis and then copy path and then um, run this here. Um, yeah. Um, so before that, uh, I just wrote a little uh, function to show the image uh, instead of um, double clicking that image. This will show show you the picture if you. So this is a function, and then every time you want to see a, a picture, you just run the show image uh, function with the, with the path as, a, uh, as an argument. And so this is so this is the original file, the dog file that we have run, and run the uh, on the predictions file, show the predictions uh, .jpg as well. There you go. So, so now evaluating our own images. Now I'm, I'm going to show the, the city.jpg that I just I have just uploaded. There you go. This is the raw image. And there's two deer in a, in a, in a city for some reason, in a, in a, city, a city street. Um, and the funny thing about this picture is no one seems to care really. They're all minding their own business with two deer walking among them. Uh, and I run this uh, again, same thing, darknet detector test, blah, 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 content city.jpg, don't show. This is this is good because um, don't show is, um, yeah, it, it's a parameter that's telling that don't bother uh, about actually displaying the picture because we're not directly connected to the to the X windows of, of, of this, um, this collab environment. So we won't be able to see graphics anyway. So don't bother, don't show. And um, yeah, and run this. Again, it goes to the file, shows you the different things that are happening, blah, 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 real fast. And yeah, look at the, the dense result set, dog, person, umbrella, blah, 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 blah. And uh, let's see uh, on the image itself by running this command um, function. There you go, beautiful. So it pictures, uh, it finds the right um, classes for most of them. There's a truck, uh, there's a umbrellas, persons, handbags here, suitcase here. Very impressive. But like I said, this deer, it thinks this one it didn't even pick it up. And the one in the, in the back, it picks it up as a dog with a 43% probable uh, confidence. Like I said, yeah, deer is not among the 80 classes that I mentioned. So that's probably why it, it's uh, it's not picking up. So yeah, that's uh, that's one of the funny things, which is good because we also want to know uh, what are the limitations of this particular um, trained weights. Um, okay, now, like I said, um, uh, as I said earlier, I, I built this process where you can put pictures in uh, Google, um, Google Drive and then uh, um, run, the, run uh, your code on them. So let me, let me open my um, Google Drive. And my drive test. So what I did, what I have, what I have done was I created a folder called uh, test. Uh, and then I put some pictures in there. And then I also have created a uh, folder within that test folder called results. 
Um, so I'm going to delete those files now within the results uh, directory uh, just to make sure that um, the process is working. So it's gone. Beautiful. So test. Yes. Results empty. Good. Now let's go back to Colab. Now you can read these instructions yourself when you're uh, when you're actually doing this. But basically, you tell Colab to connect to the file stream, then grab the files, run the scripts, and then put the files back in um, in the um, in, in the Google Drive. And you know the whole thing with the Google having the space in my drive, um, the white space, which is a freaking nightmare. So um, let's let's do a few things to uh, to uh, to resolve that problem. So when you when you click this command uh, mount drive dot mount, it gives us a uh, URL where you connect and then you say, okay, yeah, um, we are essentially asking permission from Google to to allow us to um, share files with Colab. We say allow. And that's it, and then it'll give us a uh, code, like the authorization code, uh, and then we just bring it here, and then we paste it. It never works the first time around. Let's see, give it a minute. Yeah, I think, I think it's doing its thing. It'll take a couple minutes. Yeah, for some reason, this step takes longer than expected. I um, don't know why, because co both Colab and Google, they have the same backbone, I guess. Um, but the authentication handshake takes takes longer. And this is actually the longest uh, step in the, in the whole process, because as you saw, um, the, the source coming in from GitHub into Colab was a fraction of seconds, or maybe a few seconds. And the, the build was faster. The waits were were very quick. Only this step. Sometimes I wait a little long, and uh, long, if it's taking too long, what I do is um, I just stop it, and then try again. Um, the same thing. I, yeah, it's now mounted. Now, um, because of the um, this white space thing, what I what I find uh, helpful is just to create a symbolic link, um, and then just call it my files. Uh, so it's it's a lot simple um, to deal with. So I do this, and it's created now. And I go to CD my files, and then I just run a simple uh, list files thing, and to see it's all good. Now. Um, I want to go to this test command, uh, test for directory because that's where my files are. You can tweak this process to your your liking, but uh, but this is just uh, the 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 way I did it. It's simple. Uh, if you want to tweak it, you, you feel free to do it. And um, so these are the files that I'm going to try this on. Uh, CD white tail. Make sure the files don't have any white spaces in them because that seems to have uh, caused some issues for me. But yeah, um, little things that Unix doesn't really like is uh, the file names with uh, spaces in them. Um, and then um, yeah, so what what happens here is I just create a directory in the um, data directory of darknet um, structure, and then um, call test images. And uh, let's do it first. Yeah, it was created, and then I copy because I'm still in the test directory of my Google Drive. Uh, copy star.jpg um, and then just bring them here. Uh, and if you have PNGs as well um, or any other formats, file formats, I think they are all, uh, it's, Darknet is fairly flexible that way, but you just have to uh, tweak this command to bring those files in, in, into here. And then, um, yeah, it takes a couple seconds. Yeah, all those files are there. Now, again, this is me being. Um, uh, cautious. I just want to see if the files actually made it to the to the Colab directory, and um, uh, 
Yeah, this is why I do it. It's just not showing. Let's try again. Yeah, so these are my files. Uh, they made it to the test images folder. That's good. Now, CD back to the .NET uh, um, directory uh, because that's where the commands work off of. And then uh, this little bit is my, uh, my, my code. What it does is essentially is uh, for each file uh, in, the, in the directory, which is the test images directory, uh, it creates a command to, to run the detector. So .NET blah, blah, blah. And then it creates this little guy um, plus file name. So this whole thing, and then it runs it. And then uh, immediately after running it, it, it uh, copies the predictions.jpg back onto the Google Drive. You see this, my files, which is a Google Drive, test results, file name, plus it, it appends it um, a little bit at the end called um, this, this, this little tag, results on the .jpg. Um, you may not like the actual file name that, that, that that's produced because it, it is, let's say, ct.jpg, then it becomes under results.jpg. So it's not the most prettiest thing to look at, uh, the, the file name, but I, I didn't bother to uh, tweak it anymore because that's really immaterial. Uh, so, yeah, and then it does for all the files for file name in uh, os.list directory. So it's a little. Um, a little uh, uh, few lines of code to, to run any number of uh, images without doing it manually. Um, so I have just six or seven, I, mean, I think. So if I run this, um, it just shows us what's happening, blah, blah, blah. And it takes about a couple minutes to run all of these. And um, while this is doing it, I can actually go, go back to my, um, my Google Drive and just wait here to see if the files have been produced. And uh, funnily enough, the, the very first file was this, the file with the uh, deer in it. And you see, nada. It's a, it's a, it's a classic counter example that YOLO is utterly useless when it comes to wildlife because there is, none of these are in the, in the class list for Coco data set. Um, but the others are, are coming up pretty nicely. Um, so this is a very busy cafe, um, not, not in terms of people, but in terms of objects. You can see a whole bunch of things in here. Most of them are detected. Uh, I don't know why this, this thing is not, but um, but yeah, the, the bike, by the, the, the chairs, blah, 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 they're all good. I'm gonna just quickly check a few others. See this one, potted plant, yes, beauty. Oven, microwave, another oven, uh, chairs, this person, yeah, so this is fairly very impressive. And then uh, this is uh, my favorite family picture, my nephew, niece, and my kid in Sri Lanka. So good. This is this is also pretty nice. And oh, it actually picked up the chair as well on the side. So yeah, so yeah, give it. Um, this is this is uh, fairly. I think uh, this is very impressive. Look at all these uh, elephants. This is uh, impressive because if you see these. The, one, the elephants in the foreground, yeah, there's no big deal. But the ones in the back, you can see that there's only like a less than 20% of the actual animal is, is visible in this. Yet it actually, uh, the system picture that, that that's actually a, a different elephant uh, uh, from the, the one in the, in the front. So yeah, there are certain um, really um, good uh, features of this detector. So uh, yeah, I'm really impressed by the by the output. So if we go back, you can see that it's finished now. The the triangle is finished. Um, so there you go. If you if you are with me so far, and if you manage to run these uh, uh, scripts and commands, and then manage to um, uh, get some uh, success with your uh, with your uh, own set of images, yeah, pat yourself on the back, and then um, well done. Like I said. Uh, in, in the beginning, I am not an expert in most of the machine learning stuff. I am uh, a student of machine learning as, as most of you are. 
um, and um, it's just that I have done this 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 particular thing myself um, and then um, um, learning uh, and teaching are related so me telling you all of this is actually reinforcing it uh, for me as well um, if you have any questions at all um, if, if you run into problems with any of these things just feel free to leave a comment and then I will uh, I will definitely um, uh, try to uh, help you out. Um, now, having said that, this is just how to use this .NET uh, framework. Uh, in the following weeks, I'll try to make a video to train your own data set, which I actually have. If you have the time, I can quickly show you what I did. I have made a model where I trained a model um, with the birds from um, New South Wales, Australia. And all of these birds uh, are, uh, they look like this. Some of the birds like these are being um, lorikeets, um, different sets of birds. And then once I've trained this model, I actually uh, ran the model on these pictures. And then, yeah, I, I had a fairly uh, decent success. Um, so all of these densely, this picture is dense with, uh, with these birds. And it picked up every single one of them. And um, the next picture has two different uh, classes of birds and it picked them up as well. And uh, this is a magpie. These are like different birds. Like this success is, uh, this is not entirely successful, but um, yeah. And uh, these are called, um, what are they called? Cockatoos. And you see this? It was able to even pick out this one, which was actually facing away from the camera and it's in a different structure, all uh, different uh, form altogether. Um, and then this guy is my favorite pigeon. And then this guy is Kokobora, which is a cr cricket ball um, a brand, cricket uh, brand in Australia. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go through that video uh, in a couple of weeks, but uh, if you like this video and if you think um, we, we can um, help each other out, just subscribe to the, to the channel and uh, any questions you have, uh, just feel free to leave a comment and I will uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.